core product information in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 is created and maintained from the product information management area page. In order to create a new shared product definition, you will navigate to one of the three list pages. You can either select the All Products and Product Masters list page, which is the complete overview of the full shared product repository of your organization, or you can select to create a product definition from one of its two filtered sub list pages. The products list page is a list page containing all the simple products in your organization, whereas the product masters list page is a list page containing all your configurable products. In this demo, we're going to create a simple product and thereby we can with ease select the products list page. From within this list page, we select the new products action. This dialog contains the most vital elements for product definition. First choice you'd have to make is to select the product type. This can either be of type item or service. In this demo, we're going to select item. Next, you'd have to select the product subtype. Given the fact that we chose to create this product definition from a sub list page filtered based on this type, the selection has already been made. We continue on to specify a product number. As you can see, no default number has been provided by the system and that is due to the setup of the product number sequencing. In this case, it has been set to manual entry. Selecting a number, the system will indicate to the right next to the number whether it's good for use or it has already been used in the system already. As a default, the product number will be inserted as a product name. However, you can always go in and overwrite. The same applies to the search num name. After having entered the most critical identifying elements, you can with these select OK and the product definition will have been created in your core shared product repository. Next, you select edit in order to finalize the core product definition. In this case, we have not entered a description for the product definition yet, which we will do. A description obviously serves the purpose of easier identifying what this product definition is to be interpreted in the organization as. You have a number of actions that can be triggered for this core product definition we have just created. One of the actions is to provide translations for the product definition in the organization. This means that the product name and the description field can both be translated. And what this means is that the name and the description elements can be translated on official documents. So if you have a customer residing in Japan, you can make sure that the name and the description in this case would be in Japanese for him to better understand and also to comply with law and regulations. Next, you'd have to make a conscious choice about one of the policies that apply for this product. There are actually two policies in this case. You have to determine whether the storage and tracking dimensions should be governed for this product definition on a shared organizationally independent level or in each legal entity representation. As an example, if you set 
that this product needs to be tracked by serial numbers. It will require that every product instance in all the different legal entities that may use this product definition will use serial numbers for this product. Whereas if you leave the option blank on the shared product definition level, each legal entity can then themselves decide whether or not to use serialized tracking for the product in their organizational part. Regardless whether you define it on the shared level or the legal entity level, the information must be entered since it's mandatory for the system. You can continue on adding product attributes for web searches or product categories for allowing you to better categorize the product. You can also add a product image. In the case that you want to add an image, you can specify it as a default image for this product definition. And what will happen is all the list pages in the preview pane will receive the image as well as on the product details and extended details. The product has now been created and we can go on and release it to a number of legal entities. Now for this purpose we will invoke the release process which is a two-step process in order to ensure that a legal entity will receive this product representation and can use it. Since we are triggering the action directly from the product details, the product itself will have been selected in the filter. And the only thing we need to do now is to select which legal entities we essentially want to release a definition to. This action can be run in a batch shop if you are releasing multiple sets of product definitions. We will now close the details form and if we move back to the products list page where we will find the color printer again, you will see that it has now been released to three legal entities for use. It is now up to the legal entities to go in and finalize the product setup. In order to learn more about this, you can have a look at the how-to video for finalizing product setup. And there's another video for showing how to define configurable products in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012.